Hey, everybody. I'm Don Foster with Combat. And I'm Nigel Poulton, and I've been doing Kubernetes for oh, at least four to five years now. And it's been about uh, a minute for me, right? In the grand scheme of things, Don, I would say four to five seconds. Oh, come on. Give me at least eight seconds. I've, I've been involved in this a little bit longer than four or five seconds. I'll give you eight seconds, Max. Anyway, welcome to our introduction to KubeCon for noobs. So thanks, Nigel. So this name, by the way, you just said KubeCon. So that yep. just struck a chord, right? I, I've called it KubeCon, KubeCon, Kubernetes Conference. And it always seems no matter what I say, I get kind of a weird look. Set us all straight. What is the right way to pronounce this conference? Okay, so to be honest, Don, there isn't like a right or a wrong way, like there's no official way. But I will say that most people do call it KubeCon. However, the important thing about the event is that you respect people. That really is at the DNA of the event. So you're going to get people there from all kinds of different backgrounds and people like yourself who pronounce it different. And the, the only important thing is you respect them, even the way they pronounce things. So if you want to blend in then, right? If you don't want everyone to know that you're a noob, then just call it KubeCon. Go listen and learn. It's what the conference is all about. Yep. If you want to stand out and be a bit different, then you can call it whatever you like. Heck yeah, I like that. <laughs> now on the on the topic of names, right? Do you actually know where the word Kubernetes comes from? Are you testing me here, Nigel? I am. I'm testing those eight seconds of knowledge. Well, luckily, I do. I tend to do my history uh, and fact checking as I start to dive into new technologies, and I do actually. Uh, it's from the Greek word for helmsman or the person that essentially steers or drives the ship. Uh, and of course, it's pretty obvious that that was uh, that that was the choice. As you kind of go through the entire containers ecosystem, it seems like every command or description or manifest has something to do with uh, shipping metaphors. Absolutely. Yeah. Which I guess as well is where the Kubernetes logo, that sort of helm control or, or the wheel of a ship comes from, right? Yeah, I, I've actually noticed this. It's been a bit weird for my OCD, right? When I'm trying to create different graphics, I need to grab the Kubernetes icon. Uh, I've noticed it's got seven spokes and is not your typical, you know, hexagon or octagon sort of shape. So it's not that symmetry. Why is it seven and not six or eight like we've seen in your standard shipping wheel? Yeah, it's a good point. There's a really cool story behind this, right? So if we wind the clock back, Kubernetes came out of Google, okay? And it was, let's just say it was loosely based um, on an internal technology that Google had called Borg. Well, if you know your Star Trek, you'll know that the Borg, well, actually, here we go, a Borg cube, they are an alien race from Star Trek. So because Kubernetes was based on Borg, they wanted to have some kind of reference back to that. So originally they wanted to call it Seven of Nine. Seven of Nine being a famous Borg drone that was rescued by Captain Catherine Janeway of the USS Voyager. Anyway, look, copyright law meant that they couldn't call it Seven of Nine, but as a tip of the hat to Seven of Nine and to Star Trek, they gave the wheel seven spokes. So there you go. So the foreshadowing here is that all of our applications will be assimilated. Yep, resistance is futile. <laughs> That's excellent. Now, actually, on names as well, what's the crack with this? Sometimes I'm seeing it written as K8S instead of Kubernetes. Well, this is probably for folks like myself, right? Some of us newbies that came into it uh, well after the Kubernetes got set. And that is the eight represents the eight characters between the, the K and the S so that you can shorthand it as Kate's. And that's exactly how we normally pronounce it. Now, the funny thing, of course, is the side joke is that many people often say that Kubernetes has a girlfriend named Kate, hence why we're always talking about Kate's. Uh, we are, absolutely. We, we could be having jokes like this all day. 100% we could. Um, let's talk about the event itself real Indeed. quick though. So I'm assuming that most people watching this video here are new to KubeCon. Don't stress, okay? Last time at the European event, over 70% of attendees were first time attendees. And the good thing about that means, well, you're not on your own, okay? But they've built out the 101 track, so that basic fundamental track to be bigger and better than ever. So hit the KubeCon website and go over to the schedule and you can filter on the 101 track and see all of the different sessions that are targeted perfectly for you. But you know what? It's a huge event and there's so much more than just the 101 track. In fact, Don, from a Commvault perspective, there's a load going on, right? Yeah, absolutely there is. And while I might be a newbie compared to Nigel, the Kubernetes, uh, Commvault, while we might be a new sponsor for KubeCon, 
we're not new to containers. We've actually been protecting containers for years. Uh, and we recent, uh, recently acquired a new technology, Hedvig, which offers a software-defined storage option that can be both cloud-native and on-premises for delivering persistent storage to your containers. And we have an entire story that uh, will essentially encapsulate how you can protect, manage, and migrate and store the container ecosystem that you have today, whether it runs on-premises or in the cloud or even in a hybrid environment. So come check out our virtual booth understand how our technologies, both from a data protection perspective, data management aspect, and from a storage aspect, can help you manage those, uh, those persistent containers and really help you sort of usher into that new mature containers ecosystem that will help you really modernize your applications. Nigel, yeah. as always, it's been a blast having a conversation with you. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope to see you and everyone here watching the video at KubeCon. Yep, resistance is futile.